really want to match it to really how many panels. Because the one thing you don't want to do is put 1200 watts of solar on the roof and then bottleneck it with a small device. Welcome to Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday, brought to you by Big Beard Battery. Visit BigBeardBattery.com. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hey, this week I'm gonna go ahead and talk about solar controls. What size do I need uh, based on my system? So I'm actually inside uh, the, the back end of uh, my rig here and you'll notice that I have a lot of solar controllers. Now, um, we have built a system to be completely off grid, uh, to be able to run with the solar, be able to run two ACs and charge the batteries at the same time. Let's think about this. If you're actually taking um, an RV and you want to go completely off grid, you got to be able to run stuff during the day, uh, which is going to be your solar panels, but you have to run stuff at night, which is going to be your batteries. And the question is, when you wake up in the morning, the batteries are low, how do you charge those up and still run the ACs? Well, we designed a system for that, and a lot of that has to do around the solar controllers matching with the solar panels. So. If you're able to get enough solar panels up there, the question is, is what size solar controller uh, do you have or do you need? Now, um, not only do we look at the size of the solar controller, but also the voltage of the system. We're running a 24 volt system. So I'll kind of present this both in a 24 volt fashion and a, um, a 12 volt fashion. So let's go ahead and start off with one of the smaller solar controllers. Uh, uh, I'm sure they're still smaller and I know they're still smaller, but this is the smallest one that we carry here. This is a, um, a Vitron um, Smart Solar uh, 100 volt, 30 amp charge controller. Now, again, solar panels are going to be high volts DC, especially if you put them in series, which is what we prefer. You want that voltage up pretty high. Uh, high voltage allows for long distances or long transmissions with very little uh, voltage drop. So I have high volts DC coming in this and then battery voltage coming out. Now, the reason why I say battery voltage if my batteries are 12 volts, then 12 volts is going to come out. If my batteries are 24 volts, then it's going to be 24 volts that come out. So that's the first number there. The highest that I can send in without temperature coefficient is 100 volts. Now, we would typically only send in uh, less than 80 volts, uh, simply because the colder it gets, the greater potential for your uh, solar panel to actually go above the VOC, the, the volts open circuit. So we never want to use uh, and get close to that maximum number. Vitron does have a uh, calculator that can actually uh, help uh, factor in the temperature coefficient for you. But our safe zone is just take 20 volts off and uh, you're pretty safe. The second number, 30 amps, right? Now this is the maximum that can be pushed through the uh, solar controller. It's, it's in amperage, right? And of course, most of your panels are sold based on wattage. So if we, if we want to get to wattage, we know that volts times amps equals watts, okay? Now, if I have a larger system, then I can step up. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and jump up to the one of the largest ones that they offer, especially in uh, this arena here. This is the Smart Solar Controller, uh, 250 volts, 100 amps. Now, again, I only did 12 volts. We'll see what happens over here. So I can have a, a larger array of solar panels and get my voltage up higher. So that way, this system can convert it down to the amperage to not only charge the batteries, but to run um, all of my systems with the inverters. Now this one's 100 amps out, so at 12 volts, that's 1200 watts, I can have a little over 1200 watts on uh, the RV, or say wherever, right, 1200 watts of solar. Now I know some of you say, well Todd, this is lithium, we could do 1400 watts. Totally true, but I don't want to be too confusing on the numbers, because yes, this is a numbers um, uh, video. Now, the same solar controller, both this one and this one, can not only do 12 volts, but if you have a 24 volt system, they'll also push 24 volts. Well, if I take this number here, which is 30 amps, multiply, uh, multiply it times um, 24 volts, right? So the same solar controller, if my batteries are 24 volts, then it doubles, um, it can potentially double the wattage output if I put more solar panels out. Same thing here. This one can not only do 24 volts, it could do 48 volts. 100 times 12, 1200 watts. That's what I could put on the roof. 100 times 24, 2400 watts. I don't have to get a bigger solar controller if I increase my voltage on my batteries. And of course, you guessed it with this one here. If I went with, if I went with a 48 volt system, then the one solar controller can push upwards of 4,800 watts. So do apologize, a lot of numbers, but that's why you really uh, come and watch the stuff that I put out. So if you're looking at the size of solar controller, you really want to match it to really how many panels. Because the one thing you don't want to do is put 1200 watts of solar on the roof and then bottleneck it with a small device, right? And that's really the main takeaway. Small device, save your money if it's one or two panels. Larger device, a little bit more money if you're going to put on 
uh, say four or five uh, larger panels or whatever there may be, up to 1200 watts or 2400 watts. All right, so we're looking at uh, my system here. And as I said at the beginning that I'm, I'm building a system that would be truly um, like full-time off grid and living like I didn't have solar in the first place. What do I mean? I want to be able to run two ACs. Well, if each AC pulls about say 1800 watts, then I have about 6,700 watts of solar on the roof. That's what we could put up there, 10 670 watt panels, okay? Now, you'll notice that I've got three solar controllers, the larger persuasion, that's the 250 volt, 100 um, amp output uh, solar controllers, and then 130 amp. What I could do is put uh, three of those in series, stay under my 250 volts, but crank out about um, 1800 watts per uh, large solar controller, and then the last solar panel is on this one. Again, the idea is I want to be able to run a couple ACs during the day and charge my batteries uh, in the same day because my batteries need to be completely charged at nighttime. Now I'm going to have three of my 300 amp hour 24 volt batteries. Um, so that's a lot of storage and I need enough power up on the roof to not only service what I'm running during the day, but also charge my batteries with very little generator time. Uh, we are equipped with the generator to charge that up. Based on you know what we could do on this RV, this is a system again. If I wanted to be completely off, you know, still run two ACs and charge during the day and barely run the generator, this is what it would look like. There's your six tip. Hey, if you got questions about batteries or want to go ahead and put in a solar system but need some guidance, head over to bigbeardbattery.com, fill out the solar design form, and one of our certified solar experts will give you a call and get you started. <laughs> That's right. A couple ACs during the day and charge my batteries at night. You just said and charge my batteries at night. I did because these are moon. These are lunar. These panels. are moon docks. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're moon there's moon so docks. much solar panel out there. I can get power from the moon. <laughs> All right, so let me do that again. Actually, you probably could. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I still have wattage. <laughs>